A man is driving down a lonely road late at night. He realizes he hasn't seen another car, a building, or another person for hours. His eyes are starting to close. He yearns for sleep, but he feels that he must continue on for some reason. Hmm, the perfect ingredients for another tale of the strange, mysterious, and macabre from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so you could send your stories from me and I could read them more for you. Now, However this begins, I guarantee you will not see where it's going in the end. So, my dear friends, I think you all, once again, deserve to sit back and relax with your favorite drink. And listen. I was driving down a lonely road at night. I haven't seen another car, building, or person for hours. Outside of my headlights... There was only darkness, and it seemed to stretch on for eternity. If I turn off my lights and stare into the darkness long enough, I think some stars and blurry shapes would appear, indicating trees and hills that would form a horizon. But as it was, only me, my car, and a few meters of illuminated road seemed to exist. I was dead tired. The hypnotic sight of the yellow road markings flying towards me didn't help. A few hours ago, my radio turned to static, with some snippets of distorted voices and music in between. I tried to concentrate, tried to keep myself awake. My eyes burned as they were getting drier and heavier. I closed them shut for a moment, and then violently held them open again. But they started to burn again quickly, so I repeated the process a few times, lavishing the relaxation I felt when they were closed, and fighting that same feeling to open them again. I noticed how I slowly lost that fight a little more each time. <gasps> Just one more time, I thought. The road was straight, so I closed them for a little longer now. Only for half a second, you know, to make it count. Suddenly a shock ran through my body, and I heard a violent screeching sound. Realizing that I had made friends with the road barrier, I steered away from it and brought my car to a slow, controlled halt on the side of the road. Holy shit, I thought. I was breathing heavily, and my heart was racing. After sitting there for a while, I got out and lit a cigarette, inspecting the damage to my car and contemplating the possible damage my car and I could have endured if I had have woken up a second later. But it couldn't go on like this. I opened my trunk, looking for anything that would keep me awake. Hmm. Take a nap in the car. Well, normally, yes. But it was really cold outside, and when the motor wasn't running, the heating in my car would last only as long as the battery would giving a real possibility to the freezing-to-death scenario. Besides, getting there late was not an option. Ah, instant coffee. I took out the can from my trunk and shoveled a good few scoops of it into my mouth. Then I washed it down with some Mountain Dew. <sighs> a nasty taste took over my mouth and nose. My stomach couldn't make sense of it and I felt nauseous. Oh, perfect, I thought. The unpleasant feeling and the caffeine would keep me awake. I went on. I felt less tired and more confident that I could make it to my destination on time. I only blinked for a moment and suddenly... What the f... I was driving in the middle of the road, but... But on a totally different one. I was on a dirt road in the middle of a forest... No pavement, no road markings, only trees and bushes on either side of the road. How did I get here? The transition was so instant. Did I fall asleep? But why am I on a forest road now instead of in a ditch? I couldn't have gotten here if I was fast asleep. I would have had to take a turn. Was I maybe sleepwalking, sleep driving? I could have stopped and turned around. But I didn't. Don't ask why. After a while, I saw a small green light in the forest. 
When I drove closer, I recognized a wooden hut. It wasn't a real hut, though. It was very small, like a meter twenty in height, and there was only one wall in the back. The little roof was held up by wooden pillars. In it stood a small humanoid figure. However, it wasn't real. It was a witch, <laughs> the ones you put up on your lawn for Halloween. It wore a tattered black robe and a big hood, covered most of its face in darkness, but I could make out its long, pointy nose, its crazy eyes, and a wicked smile. The eerie green light came from a little light-up skeleton hanging on the back wall. As I drove past this surreal scene, I could hear a recording of a comically evil laugh resonating from the skeleton. The whole thing gave me the shivers, even though it was clearly some kind of childish decoration put up by, well, some childish individual, I felt very uneasy. I drove on, trying to forget what I'd just seen, and discard it as totally irrelevant to my situation. But who would put this up, and why? Did they live close by, somewhere in the forest? Or was I actually close to an urban area, and the forest only a small patch of green. Where the hell was I, anyway? Just drive, I thought. You'll get out of this somehow. As I took comfort in this thought, I calmed down. The darkness surrounding me was beautiful, and the passing trees seemed to shield me from whatever evil the world had to offer. I liked this calm, and I let myself drift into it. I only had to drive, nothing more. After a while, a huge greyish form appeared in the middle of the road. I slowly stopped. As it got caught in my headlights, I could see that it was, in fact, a huge buffalo. Motionless, it stood there staring at me. My lights reflecting from its eyes made them glow creepily. I felt mesmerized by the creature. We just looked at each other for a while, then... It started walking towards me. It made its way to the driver's side window and tapped it with its horn three times. I rolled down the window. It looked at me for a while, its deep breathing forming a cloud. Then, in a deep, earthy voice, it said, If you are at an airport and you want to get your luggage, but there's three suitcases that look exactly like yours, which one would you take? I thought about this for a minute, and then I replied, um, I'd take all three of them, I guess. The buffalo nodded, and it walked past my car into the darkness. I drove on. I tried to tap into that calm, peaceful feeling again, but I couldn't. Something was off. Something felt wrong, but what was it? I should have been out of here a long time ago. Suddenly, I saw a little green light in the forest. As I came closer, I saw that it was, in fact, a little wooden hut on the side of the road that radiated the exact same green light as before. God, what the hell? As I drove past it, I could see that it was the same hut with the same witch and the little skeleton. But this time the witch wasn't standing inside the hut. It stood in front of it, closer to the road, closer to me. With a green light in its back, its front was completely dark. It scared the hell out of me. So I stepped on the gas. I wanted to put as much distance between me and that hellish thing as possible. How could this be? I hadn't made any turns. The road is just straight. And how did that thing move? It was just a decoration made of wood or plastic or whatever. As I tried to calm myself, there, in the distance, appeared another green light. No, please, God. My heart sank. It was the same hut. The witch was standing even closer to the road. Fuck. I drove even faster. I felt panic rising in my chest. Please, Lord, please. And again, I saw the green light. 
This time the witch stood right next to the road, hand extended. As I sped past her, her long pointy fingers scratched the side of my car, producing a horrible sound. I let out a scream. Drops of sweat formed on my forehead as I pushed the pedal to the floor. I looked in the rearview mirror and saw her standing in the middle of the road. When I looked ahead again, all I could see was a bunch of trees rushing towards me rapidly. <laughs> a loud bang. Gravity stopped and all went black for a moment. When I came to, I heard the motor hiss. Steam and smoke coming from the hub. The front windows shattered. Everything was blurry. I felt numb and dizzy. Blood covered the side of my face. I didn't realize it at first, but there was something in the car with me. I heard it behind me. Scratching. Moaning. With an unbearable feeling of horror, I turned my head. She's here. I felt her icy claws grasp my shoulder. As she leaned towards me, I saw her face. Nothing could describe the horror I felt. Never had I seen anything so terrible. I screamed so hard my lungs felt like they would burst. I couldn't stop. And then... Sir? 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 A young, acne-ridden face in front of me. I was at the counter of a gas station. Some potato chips and the coffee in hand. Sir, can you hear me? The teenager employee behind the counter asked. He sounded annoyed. That'll be four ninety nine, please. Oh, sure. I confusedly handed over the money. How the hell did I get here? Thank you, sir. Um... Please step aside for the next customer. The store was big, brightly illuminated, and music was playing softly from the radio. I just stood in the corner, gripping my chips and coffee like a teddy bear, trying to compute the situation. Everything seemed normal. There were people. I could see my car parked outside in one piece. Was it all a dream? I took a deep breath and walked towards the exit. As I walked past the aisles, something weird caught my eye. In the fridge, the milk cartons had a picture of a buffalo on them. I took one of them in my hand. It read, Which one would you take? Reading this sent a shiver down my spine. I put it back and walked out of the store quickly. My car was the only one in the parking lot. A girl in her teens laid on my hub, smoking a cigarette. Part of her hair was dyed neon pink, and she had a piercing going through her right eyebrow. She was wearing a woolen cap, a jacket that was way too big, ripped jeans, and combat boots. What the fuck? Move it, I said. She turned her head, looked at me, took another drag and exhaled. Why? Because it's my car, I replied in anger. I don't see your name on it. She smiled mockingly. I was losing my patience. Listen here. I had a pretty rough night. I need to get moving or I'm going to be late. She sat up. You're in no position to worry about that. You'd better look out for yourself now. She looked at me with a serious expression on her face. Normally, I wouldn't pay attention to adolescent punks. But this one triggered something in me, somehow. Hmm. What do you mean? Where do you think you are, old man? Hey, I'm only 27. Just tell me where you are right now. I opened my mouth. I'm... At, I'm on the road to, Something about my wife? Oh. I started to think. Where was I? And where was I going? I couldn't say. I only knew I had to get somewhere and that it was urgent. The girl got down from my car. You don't know. Like a reflex, 
I took out my phone to have some clue as to what time it was and where the hell I was going. But all I could see were some weird scribblings, letters and numbers constantly changing and shifting. I couldn't make sense of it. <laughs> weird, ain't it? She smiled. So what? She looked at the sky with a pondering expression on her young face. You see those little glowy things? You mean the stars? Yes, those. Can you see how they move? I looked up and... Uh, they were moving. Each in its own direction. Like a swarm of flies. I've, I've never seen anything like that. Nobody has, she replied. When I looked around, the gas station was gone. Oh, where are we? Who are you? And what the hell is going on? I started getting nervous. <laughs> well, you're not in Kansas anymore. Time and space are kind of... Uh... Suddenly, my phone rang. I somehow took the call. At first, all I could hear was static. Then, some sort of voice emerged. Twenty. Twenty-one. Eighty. Eighty-one. Right by you. The grey moon bleeds. As it dissolves, you lose your soul. As it is lost, your eyes will become a window. You will see me. Then the voice continued saying random numbers. Creeped out, I looked at the girl. Who is it? She asked. Is it the witch? The moment she asked that question, the voice started shrieking. No, there were two voices, one shrieking and one groaning in a deep, inhumane manner. They got louder and louder. I tried to hang up, but the horrible sound continued. It got so loud that I threw my phone to the ground and stomped on it. It shattered, and silence overtook the parking lot. I sank to the ground. The girl held my shoulders as I tried to catch my breath. I looked up at her. Where am I? Is this a dream? In a way. Dreams are your mind trying to make sense of certain fields of energy, forces, entities, drives. You're inside, and your outside become blurred in this process. How you experience them is in your head. But in a certain sense, they are real. In a dream, however, you're just a tourist. Nothing can hurt you since part of you is still on the other side. Here. <gasps> oh no! She looked behind me. I turned around. There, on the far end of the parking lot, stood the witch. Holy shit! We clung to each other, cursing and screaming in terror. We gotta get out of here, I yelled. We got into my car. I turned the key, but it wouldn't start. Oh, come on, you piece of shit. I tried again and again. While in panic, I noticed how the small, demon-like creature slowly started walking towards us. Oh, hurry up, old man. She's coming. The girl gripped my arm so tight it hurt. The creature was almost here. The car finally started. I pushed the pedal to the floor and drove out of the lot like a madman onto the road. There were no street signs anywhere, and before I could think... We were driving through the forest. What the hell is that thing? I asked. She looked at me, seriously, and said, Stay away from her, okay? I don't know how she got here, but she is dangerous. She'll try to keep you here forever. I nodded. For a while, I just kept speeding. Everything was quiet. The sight of the trees passing helped us calm down. After a while, I broke the silence. So, what's your name? Daria, she said. Oh, like the cartoon character. 
She rolled her eyes. Yes, like the cartoon character. She lit a cigarette. <laughs> you shouldn't smoke, you know. How old are you anyway? I have no age. Not knowing what to make of that, I said, Well, you shouldn't smoke anyway. Her eyes rolled even further back than before. Yes, Dad. After another period of silence, I asked, So, um, what's your part in all of this? She looked at me with a puzzled expression. What do you mean? Well, like, <laughs> I don't know. Why were you at the gas station? What's your deal? I... Um, I don't know. Her expression turned bitter. What's wrong? I asked. She started looking at her hands awkwardly. I... I can feel myself... Getting older. What, what's happening? I don't like this. What the fuck is happening? You curse a lot. So do you. She shouted. Relax, I said. I have no idea why, given our present situation. After a while, some strange lights appeared all around us. Blue, red, green. They seemed to follow us, flying around us like fireflies, only much bigger. They became greater in number. The girl started breathing heavily. All we could see were the lights. The forest was gone. Even though I was driving very fast, with no discernible surroundings and only the lights that kept our pace, I couldn't make out if we were moving or not. Realizing this, a strange feeling overtook me. I let go of the gas pedal. What are you doing? Keep going, old man, she said. Why? Where are we going? She looked at me with fear in her eyes. Even though I was far from feeling secure, I answered her gaze with a smile. It's going to be okay. She gulped, and her breathing was getting slower, just like the car. I killed the engine, and everything got quiet. The lights danced around us, illuminating our faces in the most marvelous of colors, while we just sat there, looking at them in awe. After a while, they started vanishing one by one. The idea of complete darkness sent a shiver through both of our spines, and before long, it became a reality. We sat there in silence for a while, not knowing what to do. Suddenly, everything became bright. It was like the sun rising, but much faster. The blinding light was accompanied by horrible moaning, shrieking and scratching. The car rocked back and forth. As our eyes adapted to the brightness, we saw them. Witches. Dozens of witches all around us. They were clawing away at the car, moaning and grunting like a horde of zombies. The noise was unbearable. Daria covered her ears, screaming, and I let out a scream myself. Looking around us, with nowhere to go, I started to panic for a second. Then I looked at the girl. She was screaming in terror. And somehow, this sight forced me to calm down. In what may have been our last moment, I looked at Daria and smiled. Her face, which was shrugged up and wet from the tears, untightened and gave away an expression of bewilderment. And then, even though she was still shaking and crying, she smiled back. Daria, I said calmly, if you're in an airport and you want to get your luggage, but there's three suitcases that look exactly like yours, which one would you take? She replied, I think I'd take all three of them. Facing death and beyond, she smiled at me. I love you, Dad. <laughs> I love you too, sweetheart. We embraced. The noise became so loud, our ears would break, and the light was as bright as a thousand suns, burning us up in its blazing whiteness. Silence.
I awoke in a hospital bed. It took me a while to understand where I was, but after a while, I remembered. I was on a business trip when my wife went into labor. She was three weeks early. When I got the call, I decided to drive through the night to be there for her. Then, everything was blank. As I regained my memory for the last few days, I lost what I knew about last night. Or was it a dream? Something about a gas station? As I tried to remember, my wife walked in. In her arms, she held the prettiest little thing I've ever seen. Hey, my love, she said. We hugged and kissed like we hadn't seen each other for over a year. She put the baby in my arms. It was so tiny. I was close to tears. You had an accident, honey, she explained concernedly. You probably fell asleep at the wheel and crashed near the hospital. You were in a coma for three weeks. Trying to process that, I said, I'm so sorry, honey. I wanted to be there for you so badly. It's okay. I'm just happy you're alive, you big idiot, she said with a warm smile. It's funny. The doctors told me the moment she was born that you were out of danger. That was on Halloween Eve. I looked at the little wonder sleeping in my arms. It's a girl, right? Yeah, how do you know? I couldn't answer that. I just had to smile. Being really happy and, well, full of morphine. After a while, my wife asked. So, have you thought of a name? Have you thought of a name? <laughs> yes. Daria. <laughs> like the cartoon character? Yes. Like the cartoon character. Oh, I really enjoyed reading that one. Uh, didn't end how I thought it was going to do when I started reading it. Um, very worthwhile, I thought. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Anyway, whatever you thought, thoughts, comments, and general chit-chat below, below the video, please. And of course, I will join in as much as I can. Well, that's it for me for another evening. But rest assured, I of course will be back with you again very soon. So, please join me again on Friday for another amazing story. Until then... I wish you very, very sweet dreams, and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store and pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>